What about your energy? What about how you want to feel? What about that? That's what we're talking about on today's podcast episode. I'm Ange, and today in the Intentional Mind Podcast, we're celebrating our 100th podcast episode. So that's just crazy to me to think about is that I've showed up 100 different times behind the mic and just sharing whatever I feel called to share, despite the conditions never, ever being perfect. Like, I remember the times I was in the closet pushing my cat away from the mic who wanted to keep screaming, you know, and just trying to put the stuff out there. And I was thinking this morning when I was journaling, um, had my coffee, all the things. Oh my gosh, I found some amazing coffee over here in Maine. Ugh, smells so good. Anyways, as a side note, um, but I was having all that, that coffee and doing my journaling and I had this flashback um, on my past self. And I remember her being so afraid to like share this podcast you know, and push the publish button. And the thoughts that were running in her mind were, is this going to be a waste of time? Like, am I going to pour so much time and energy into this thing and no one's even going to show up and listen and no one's even going to care? And maybe I should wait until I do, you know, X, Y, Z thing. And maybe I should wait until this timing is better. Almost like till the conditions are perfect. I should wait until then. I remember her thinking all these thoughts And I think about how she didn't feel ready. She had all this doubt and stuff, and she still showed up and hit the publish button. And me right now, 100 episodes later, I'm so grateful for her, for her that she had the courage to show up and take messy action. Because that has led to the life that I have now. The people that I've been able to meet, like they may have never found me if it wasn't for the podcast. And I 100% believe, like shout out to my amazing clients, that God has placed me in their lives, had our paths cross, and them in my lives. So not only for me to help them on their journey, but for them to help me too. Like it's a two-way street. Like every day I'm so freaking inspired by the people that I get to work with because they're working on doing big things in their life and working on overcoming their crap that shows up. And they're committed to that process. And I'm always thinking about like, you know, let's say one of my clients wants to make more money so that she can um, provide better for her family or that he can provide better for their family or his family. And um, I'm just, I think about that in my own life. I'm like, oh, where am I not asking for what it is that I want too? So like, I feel inspired by even hearing how they're going about this process and us working through that stuff or like sometimes boundary stuff, like where they're struggling, trying to make sure that they're giving their time to the things that matter most to them versus everybody else and everything. And it's steering them away from the life that they really want. And they feel like they're not living true to themselves. Like it. When we're working through this, some of this stuff, I'm like, yeah, where am I in my life? Am I not doing that too? So I just feel like it's, yeah, it's a two-way street. I'm just so grateful because my past self, like she showed up for me right now and led to all this opportunity. And had she not had the courage, even other people's lives that I've been blessed to be able to work with and help them find dream opportunities for them, that may have never even happened for them if I played a role in that, if she had not decided to show up. So it makes me think about in your life, I want you to be thinking about not just current self, but future self, like current self might be freaking out and thinking that she's not good enough to do X, Y, Z thing, right? Or she needs to wait for the better timing and conditions, right? She might be feeling that way. But what about future self who needs you to show up and just take action on it versus spinning your wheels and waiting for the perfect time? There's no such thing as a perfect time. There's never going to be. You're never, ever going to feel ready. And you just got to take action anyways, because you never know what that's going to lead to. So instead of listening, so there's two voices, right? You can listen to that critic that tells you all these reasons why it's not going to work out for you, why you're not good enough to do X, Y, Z thing, 
Or you can listen to that higher version of yourself that's like, get it, girl. Go after it. And the reality is, is that you're never going to know how something is going to turn out. And that's where your faith comes in. That you believe no matter what, you're going to thrive because you're going to decide to. So even if crap hits the fan, you're still going to thrive because you are going to decide to. Okay? So now let me go, before we go into more of the energy stuff, I want to tell you guys, I want to keep it real with you and say that I want to talk about expectations and how expectations can cause us so much suffering and can stop us from playing big in our lives and going after what it is we really want. Because we have all these expectations around something and it really like steals our joy in so many different situations. But the example that I want to give to you guys is, you know, it's our 100th episode and I had this vision of what I wanted it to be like. And I thought about how I would love to go back and like take clips from previous episodes and then like put them all together. And I still think this is a really fun idea and I still want to do this, but like put them all together and kind of like do a full like recap and just like celebrate all past episodes, wrap up this season. So I had this idea, right? These are my expectations of what I wanted it to look like. And then life happened. So as far as like getting the time to actually go back and grab the clips and do all the editing and all the things, that was not something that happened this week because my main priority has been really um, supporting my husband to finish out the Appalachian Trail. He's one week away from summoning Mount Cantaden and completely finishing this journey. And I like get teary eyed just thinking about it because I'm so freaking proud of him. Like I have like the proud wife moment feels right now. I don't know why I'm so emotional today. Probably because like I'm a little nervous too because I'm supposed to be kicked out of my Airbnb right now. I did ask. I asked for permission to stay later. He said, um, I'm proud of myself for doing that because that was uncomfortable. But and the guy was like, yeah, stay as long as you need. And I'm like, no, you don't really mean that, right? Like, But I like need to be here so I can like finish this episode. Okay, that was a rant side note. So anyways, I've been like emotional just thinking about how there's one more week left and my husband is going to be done with this, this dream of his. And to say that I've enjoyed all of the journey would be a lie. Just keeping it real. Going through this, like supporting him while he's hiking, while also working full time, and trying to do all the other things I needed to do and moving across multiple states, selling a home, buying a new home, dealing with all of that in the past few months, that was a lot for me, I felt like, to deal with. And I wasn't always the most joyous about it. And I had a lot of expectations around how I wanted things to be during the season. Like I had these ideas that my routines were gonna, I was gonna continue to follow my routines that I did before in past seasons of my life, which is completely unrealistic given all the things that I have going on now. And we do that to ourselves. I see my clients do it all the time and I do it too, where we're like, I'm just really disappointed in myself because I was doing all this stuff and I was doing a really good job at it. And then now this thing happened and now I can't keep up with stuff and I just feel like crap. And you're just like, wait, but this season is so different. And what it truly is your priority this season. In the season of my life now, it's like my priority is supporting my husband on his dream and helping him. There's only one time in our life where my husband's going to be hiking the Appalachian Trail, where I'm going to be living remotely, you know, going from Airbnb to Airbnb. It's just a season. I don't have to act like I have all the, like, it has to be exactly this way. It's like, I can still like enjoy this season because when I start placing these expectations around how it's supposed to be and I stay attached to it, that's the thing is like you can be intentional for sure. You know, I'm all about that. Be intentional with your time, where you want your energy to go, but don't be so attached because that causes so much suffering for us, you know? And like, I think about that now, it's like when I got to check myself, when I find myself being like frustrated that I didn't get, you know, do whatever routines I wanted to do because of this, I sit back and I'm like, this one life, Ange, one season right now, it's a different season for you. What do you really want? You want to enjoy it. Why are you not letting yourself enjoy it? 
because you're acting like it has to be X way, that you had to get all these things done. It's like, what are you doing? Because you think that you want to, those, getting all those things done will bring you joy. That's why you are so attached to it. But you being attached to it is actually stealing your joy. So what other ways can you have that joy now? So the thing, the whole point of why I wanted to share this story was this whole expectation stuff. Like I almost didn't even record this episode for you guys because I was like, um, oh, I had this idea of how it had to look at this time, you know? And then it's like, what are you doing, Ange? Like, no, like progress over perfection, messy action. Like the reason we're on 100 episodes is homegirl, your past self, decided to show up without specific attachment. She didn't feel ready. It wasn't perfect. And she still showed up. So 100 episodes later, you got to be reminded of her courage and show up. Let go of your expectations around how things have to be. You can design that in any other, like you can do an episode like that anytime, Yanch. And I think about that, like I'm, I know I'm talking to myself, but I'm also talking to you because I've also seen with my clients where they're like, well, I have to do it this way. And it's like, there's no rules. Even when it comes to resumes, like sometimes we're working on resumes and they're like, because I heard, I read this, that it has to be done this way. And this is why. And it's like, girl, there's no rules. You can make that resume any way you want. Your, your LinkedIn profile, you can write it any way you want. Your plan for this week, you can do it any way you want. Your faith, you can practice it any way you want. Why are we making up all these rules, these expectations that are causing us so much suffering and stopping us from showing up? So that's where it's like, I was like, no, like I'm showing up even though I don't have originally what I had planned. And I know that I'll be led to give you the message that you need. And that's the other thing I've been practicing in my life, and I hope you're doing this too, is stop just giving all your energy to the inner critic that's telling you all the things that are, that, you know, why it won't work out, why it might be a waste of your time, why whatever that's discouraging you. Give it to that higher version of yourself, the inner guide, the inner mentor. These are some of the words that we've been talking about in the Aspire for More course that my friend Jill is hosting right now, which has been so fun. I mentioned it to you guys, I think a while back about playing big and how this group course, well, we started it and it's just been really eye-opening to me and I'm so excited for the next round that she'll be hosting. That'll be in August. You can go check it out if you want. It's um, www.theaccountabilitist.com. I'll put it in the details episode, but she'll start a new round in August for the four weeks you meet on Thursday evenings. Um, it's been really fun. It's got me thinking a lot about like this whole, we have this conversation about the critic and the guide and like who you're listening to. And that got me thinking like today, it's like, okay, listening to the guide, like the Holy Spirit. I like to think about it as that. Like for me, that's the terms I would use. Sometimes I say like higher self, whatever. I think it's all the same thing. So anyways, like in the, like trusting that I'll be guided, like in so often in situations where like, oh, I want to do that thing, but I don't know if I can handle it. I don't know what I'll do in that. It's like, it ain't all up to you. Like lean on the guide, lean on the Holy Spirit. They'll help you through that. Tap into that more. Listen to the intuition more. Don't give all your energy to the critic. And that's what a lot of us have been doing for keeping it real. So today I'm like, okay, I'll be guided. So I'm going to tell you, now I'm getting to the content. Oh, I have so many things I want to tell you. I wish we could just like have coffee and tea or something and chill and like talk about all these things that are on my mind. Um, but okay, but you know, the reality is I, I do need to leave this Airbnb. Um, so, all right. And you got to get on with your day. So anyhow, we're going to go to the dream that I had. Um, so this dream that I had that got me thinking of this episode. So this was the scenario and it felt so real. You know how sometimes you have dreams and you're like, well, like you're like, whoa, that like you had no idea it was a dream. It just felt so, so real to you, all the feelings. So that's how this dream was. And the situation was there was like a wooden booth and I was in like a nature area, like lots of trees around and everything. And there was a wooden booth and I was standing in line to get a ticket for something. And I don't know what it was, um, but the wooden booth had 
two girls that were working and they were talking to each other about like their lives. And I was, I got to the front of the line and they're still chatting with each other. And she was talking about how one of them was talking about how she was in a crappy relationship. And, um, I started, you know, listening to her and it was taking a while to get my ticket. And Ian comes up, he was doing something, walks over to me and he's like, Hey, Ange, like what's going on? Why, why are you taking so long? And I was like, oh, I'm just listening, you know, to the story. And the girl was talking again more about this crappy relationship that she's in and how she gets treated crap, like crap, blah, blah, blah. And Ian's like, I don't care. Like, I don't care about this. Just get the ticket. Let's go. And he said it right in front of her. And he's like, I don't want to deal with this like negative energy. Let's go. Let's go have fun. And um, I was like, Ian, you know, like what? That's rude, you know. So he's like, he walked away, went to go do his thing. And I was waiting to get the ticket and she was still telling me the story and I just kept listening. And as I was listening to everything she was saying, I felt my energy shift lower and lower and lower. She was talking about basically all the stuff he does to her and that it was just so like giving her power away. Like she had none in the situation and she had to deal with the situation that she was in, just had to go through it. And I could feel that energy shifting lower, lower. And I said to her after she had, I stood there for quite a while in the dream. And um, I remember feeling like torn. Like I was like, oh, I need to go like with Ian. I want to go have fun. But wait, I want to be respectful and listen to this person. Like I remember feeling that and hearing those thoughts in my mind in the dream. So um, I stand there for a while, give her my time. I listen. And then I say to her, what is stopping you from leaving? What's stopping you from leaving? Because the story she told me was awful, the things that she was saying. And she was like, like disgusted by me. And she was like, it's not that easy. And I was like, so annoyed in my dream because I was like, I just gave you all this time and I took it away from my husband and the thing I really wanted to do to listen to you complain about your life. And you have no intention of even wanting to leave. And I gave you all my energy my attention. I took it away from my husband and my family, the thing I wanted to do. And you had no intention of ever leaving. So in my dream, I was so pissed about it because I was like, what? Like, why did you like stand there and even listen? And you felt I was feeling my energy dip, dip, dip as she was talking to me. And it didn't feel in alignment to me to even be there. But I wasn't listening to myself. I wasn't listening to that higher version of myself. And um. It was the inner critic that was like, oh, you don't want to be rude, so you should stay. It's like that other voice I was giving energy to. And I'm not saying I'm not someone that wants to listen to what someone's going through. Like I coach every day. I hear all kinds of things, right? But I also need to be mindful of my dreams, my goals, my energy too, you know, and how something is affecting me and what is in my control and what's not, you know? So as this was happening, it was showing me in my dream, like how I was giving all this energy away and taking it away from my girls, my dreams, my desires, my family, the things that are important to me. And I think that was the point of the dream was it was showing me like, hey, Ange, where in your life are you allowing your, your intentionally, like, well, maybe you're not intentionally, but you're staying in a situation or doing something, even though it feels so out of alignment to you and what you really want. Where are you doing that? Where are you giving your energy away to the thing you don't really want to give it to? And you're not thinking about how you want to feel, right? It's like, check yourself because time, time I don't get back. That was time that I took that was given to something that I didn't want to give it to. I took it away from my family and my priorities. And I won't get that back. Like we're always concerned about our money, like how we spend our money, right? We're like, oh, I'm not going to give my money to this. But what about your time? Where are you giving your time to things that are not in alignment with who you really want to be, how you really want to feel? What about you? Because at the end of your life, like, you're going to, you want to reflect back and see your life, the life that you lived, that you wanted to live, not you being the people pleaser and doing all the things everybody else wanted you to do, including sitting there and listening to people complain about their life when it doesn't serve you. And I, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be a good listener. I know you know what I'm trying to say with this, but you know, some people, they don't really want to be helped. They just want to complain. 
And is that really worth your energy? Does that make you feel good? And is it even helpful to them? You know, sometimes, yeah, listening is super helpful to someone. I mean, that's a big part of what I do as a coach. But we know situations where we we know it's out of alignment with who we want to be. And we still stick around because the inner critic is whispering something in a, to us that you might be this way. People might think this you know, way about you if you choose to. And then the higher self, like we're not even paying attention to her or him or that voice, you know. So take with that whatever it is that you need. But also, like, thinking about, um, I guess I have in my notes. Let's go to my notes. Okay. So these are some things. I'm going to move my mic here. These are some things that are energy-giving things. Like, if you think about how you want to feel, like, because you want to design a life that is in alignment with how you want to feel. And you want to give your energy to things that help you be more of who you want to be. So these are some things you can do to make sure that you're living in alignment. So one of the things is that ideal schedule. Create an ideal schedule for yourself. I always talk about this. Create it, an ideal schedule. Don't be attached to it. You don't have to place all these expectations around, oh, you have to show up. It has to be this way. No, that's not the point. The point is to create this ideal schedule and learn from it. And I actually have people practice their schedule and they will say like, oh, this was a dumb time for me to do this. Doesn't really make sense. And then I realized, too, I don't think I even really want to do this that I put in my ideal schedule. It's a learning opportunity. It's not meant for you to beat yourself up and like it's not meant for you to follow it exactly. That's not the intention behind this. It's about you thinking about ideally how you want to spend your time. Have you ever really thought about that? Like truly and put it out in the week, my ideal week. No, because you know what we do? You know what a lot of us do? And I do this too, is I will start my plan, I'll do my plan and I'll be like, what appointments need to go in here? All of everybody else's stuff. And then I put it in the calendar and it's like, but what about my stuff? What about how I want to feel? That should go in the calendar so that I'm not showing up resentful, you know, about what I did with my time. So the thing is, this ideal schedule, you create it, and these are the things that you put on it first. Then you can put everything else in it. Then all the other stuff can fit into your life, right? These are the things you put on it first. It's time for you. Time for you to just like get in the zone and like, you know, you know those moments where you lose track of time, that higher energy that you get in, you dip in. And sometimes it could be like someone will say it's like when I'm surfing or when I'm, you know, playing with my kids or I'm hiking or whatever that thing is for you, writing, you lose that track of time. Like you need to make sure that that makes it in the ideal schedule and you prioritize that because there's a section in my journal or my uh, planner that says best moments from today. And I'll tell you what, the best moments from today are never me checking a box, doing something for someone else. It's not that. Usually the best moments are like when I felt like I was, you know, sitting there and I was journaling and I had all these good ideas or when I was laughing with my husband or playing with my nephew or whatever. Those little things, those are my best moments. So why am I not planning to have more time for those best moments? Those things that make me lose track of time. They make me feel joy. That should be in my ideal schedule first and foremost before I prioritize anything else because that's why I'm really here is like to live an abundant life. That's what we're called to. I really believe that. That's what I want for my life. I want it to be fun. I want it to be joyful. I know you do too. So that means we need to prioritize that. Why are we not prioritizing that? Why do we act like checking the box for some other thing or some, some work thing or some person is more important than that? It's not. Because on our deathbed, we ain't going to give a crap about the fact that we checked that box and we got all those things done that someone else wanted us to do. We're not going to care about that. We're going to be reflecting back. We want to be about those joyful moments that we had with the people that we loved. We lived like true to us, where we stood on the stage, whatever metaphorically the stage may be for you. You did that thing. You created something. That's what you want to reflect back on. So we need to think about in our schedule, where can we put time for that? We can prioritize living the life that we want. You have to prioritize it or it doesn't happen. You're intentional. You put it in there, but you're not attached. 
Like that's the key. It's where the work meets the woo. That's the magic. That's that magical place. Not just sitting there wishing, right? But it's being intentional, being strategic, but also letting the woo, the magic come in. Okay, so that needs to make it in the ideal schedule. Ideally, you need to have an ideal schedule for yourself. Dream it up. Put time for you in there where you lose time. Those best moment times. Um, time to have a deep sense of belonging. If you follow the Blue Zones research where they look at people who lived over 100 years and they lived very good lives overall, health, like health-wise, feeling good about their lives in general over 100 years, a commonality was that they felt this deep sense of belonging and community. That was a big part of it. So a lot of us, I find this with all my clients, is that a lot of times when they're feeling unfulfilled with their career or their life, it's like they're craving this deep sense of belonging and community. This is why I always push my clients to join different groups, find their people, their people, so they can feel that. And it's like their energy shifts. And then they end up finding the careers that they want. And it's all because we got the energy to shift. That is a part of the recipe, I think, for having a life that you really love is this deep sense of connection and belonging with your people. You know who your people are. Maybe you're super nerdy. You got to find your nerds. Maybe you're super athletic and you got to find your fitness people, right? Maybe you like to read, you know, or geek out about personal development stuff like I do. You got to find those nerds too, the ones that are all into that. Plant people, cat people, dog people, your people. You need to find them and spend time with them. Make sure because that that helps your energy, keeps it higher, and then everything else is easier. I promise you. If you work on the energy stuff, all the other stuff you want, that will come. That will flow in. So that needs to make it on the calendar too. Time for that deep sense of belonging community. If you don't have that, then I need you to think about what kind of community do you want in your life? Where are they? Can you join a group? Can you, where do they hang out? Or do you need to create a space for them to hang out? Thinking about that, putting that on the calendar. That's a priority to be in the calendar. Time for you, for you to lose yourself, to get in the zone, to do the things that you love. Time for that. Time for the belonging community. That needs to be on the calendar. And then um, time for caring for your body. That's your vehicle to make all your dreams come true. You need to prioritize prioritize time caring for that, for that vehicle to get you where you want to go. Um, and obviously time for the fun and the adventure. Add time for that. Make sure all this stuff gets in the calendar before everything else does. Put that ideal schedule out. I was thinking about, I was a little stressed recently about like trying to figure out how I could hike with my husband and then I would have to take a day off of work stuff. And I just keep it real with my work bestie, who's also my leader, um, Philip, who I just absolutely adore his leadership and him as a coach and my friend, just all the things. So freaking grateful. Like I remember I wrote down on this little piece of paper a while ago, I wrote down what I wanted like for my career. And I'm like, I am. And I wrote down this I am statement. And it was I am doing work that I love with a team that I really love who's really passionate about the work that we're doing. It was something like that. And I'm like, I feel like that's manifested um, in my life. And I just feel so grateful for that. So I, you know, was being vulnerable and just sharing about how I was really feeling about my time and how I wanted um, to be able to hike with my husband. But then I struggled because I also like work that day and just trying to like be the coach that I want to be too. And he was like, I, I was like, I need help like organizing like, my calendar and like making this work, you know? And he's like, write down what you ideally would like to happen and don't worry about anything else. Like start with ideally for you. What do you want to happen? And like for me, it's like, I want to hike with my husband. You know, I want to finish this journey out with him and support him. That's the main priority. But I was worried about like letting other people down, um, having to, the problems associated with changing my calendar, all the things. and you know, I came, so I came to the meeting with that ideal thing that I wanted, well, kind of, we kind of coached around it too. <laughs> but anywho, um, we got there. And like, that was like, and then we made, then we, we looked at like how that was priority first, who I really wanted to be. 
And then the rest of the stuff, we'll see how that fits around. The other demands and other things that just need do need to happen. Then we'll paste that around where there is space for it. But what's going to take up space first is that priority in my life. Some of us don't even know really what those priorities are. But you know, hands down, it's your mental health and well-being, hands down. It's your family, the people that you love. That's priority over all the other stuff. Everything else should fit around that. Shouldn't take up the space before that, you know? But a lot of us are creating our calendars in the opposite way. So the point of this is when you think about, I want you to think about your energy and what the heck is draining your energy. There's things draining it. And this reminds me of the quote that I love so much, um, which is the reason why you feel so drained is you're not doing enough of the things that you really love. So think about that. Like, where can the things you love take priority over those energy draining things? Put that in there first. Make that priority in your life first, and you'll even do better at all the other things. So, um, and then also thinking about how you want to feel. Stop always making it about how everyone else is going to feel. What about you? What about you? So that's the whole point of this episode. I hope you got something out of it. I want to say too, if you're interested in ever um, working with me one-on-one, send me an email. Um, My email is just go to my straight up Gmail. It's angembarnard at gmail.com. I work with happentoyourcareer.com and that's where also I do all of my career coaching stuff through. Um, if you ever are interested in anything like that, you just go over to this to the site. You can connect with Cindy there. This is the thing I want to say is like, you know how like there's meetings where like they'll say like, oh, let's have a meeting and then we can see if we're a good fit together or like stuff like that. And then then we'll give you the price. And you know that's coming. That's a part of the, the thing. But this is an opportunity and there's different. And honestly, I'm keeping it real with you guys. I don't even know what the packages are. Happen to your career.com. I don't know. I don't pay attention to them. I just try to focus on what I'm doing, which is helping someone. So Cindy deals with that. And we always try to see if someone's a good fit to working with us. Um, of course, right? But I know that some people don't talk with Cindy because they're afraid of like the amount that it's going to be or they're afraid of like having to reject like, you know, whatever is offered and all that stuff. And I want to say like, like be curious. Like you can show up, take those calls. They're offering them to you. Take those calls. See if something's a good fit for you. And if it's not, if it doesn't feel in alignment with you, say no. Or ask for what it is you want. Propose another option. Like have the courage to do that for your life. And I'm speaking to myself because I was just interviewing coaches recently for myself. And I was feeling like what it feels like for my clients. I was like, oh, I know it's so uncomfortable. And like they're like, yeah, let's talk and see if we're a good fit. And then we'll go over and see the pricing options. And I'm like, oh, crap, I don't want to reject them if it's too much for what I want to pay and blah, blah, blah. So I wrote down a list of like what I'm looking for in a coach. Then I started doing these interviews. And I was like, you know what, Ange? If it's not for you, speak your truth and say, thank you. But, you know, like that's not for me. Like I don't think this is a good fit for me right now in my life. And be okay with that. Like you do you, boo. Versus like hiding and never even checking it out. Just be curious. See. And let's say maybe they offer, someone offers you an option and you're like, oh, that's not, that's like not good for me. It's like, then maybe you propose another option and you ask for what it is you want. Like I thought about this morning, you know, going back to this whole Airbnb thing, like staying here past the time, which I really should leave right now. Um, Well, I was thinking about how I wanted to feel like today. I wanted to feel like I got this episode out there. I wanted to feel accomplished. I wanted to share my thoughts like, you know, that's that would serve my energy best. But the thing that was getting in the way was that I didn't have enough time in the Airbnb. So I could deal with the discomfort of asking for more time, asking for what it is that I want, being true to myself, thinking about how I want to feel. And I did that and I got this additional time to be here and put this out there. And and this is what I'm learning from the whole playing big course uh, with Jill recently or the Aspire for More course that she's offering where a group of us women meet every Thursday and we talk about playing big in our lives. I said my definition of playing big is that, that I'm not allowing problems or um, 
uncomfortable feelings to get in the way of me having what it is that I want or going after it. That's me playing big. And today I felt like I played big because the issue was the checkout time and the uncomfortable feeling was asking for additional time. But I wasn't going to allow that to stop me from going after what it is I want. And now my brain is seeing more opportunities to do that where I feel proud of myself. I'm like, I'm playing big. So that course has been so fun. Jill's running it again in August. I don't know if I already said this in this episode, but I'll say it again. She's running it in August um, where we meet on Thursday evenings. Um, And it's just fun to hear how people are playing big and to be with your people. So if you feel like you need that community, and it's so freaking cheap. Like I just am like, what the hell? Okay, sorry. Jill, are you listening? If you are, I'm like, girl, you know you can charge more for this because this is like really changing people's lives so much. Um, but like right now, it's totally affordable to do for anyone, really. So um, check it out. You can go to www.theaccountabilitist.com. And I'm sharing this because I think so many people need it. Like the other day I was like, I've just, it's helped me a lot. And I've been thinking, I'm not like, I I get nothing to do this. Like I'm not, I'm not hosting this. Like I'm just there trying to play big in my life too with everyone else that's in the space. Um, And it's helpful to me. So I want to share that. But I was thinking about how we were having so much fun just talking and being real. You know, there's tears sometimes when we talk about just hard crap. And then you have this support system there. And I, I felt like, oh, there's so many people I want to be, I want them to be here right now. So you might have been someone that I texted last minute because I was like, jump in this right now. Because I just felt like, oh, I want you here because it's like, we're all trying to play bigger in our lives and to have the support. And it's really cool to have that. Um, and I'm so grateful that Jill's doing that because I'm glad that I don't have to host it right now with the season of my life. Because I wanted that space. I craved that in my own life. But I've just been being the host and organizing, that's not something I want to do right now, given the season that I'm in, the priorities in my life. So I'm like, looking, then I'm looking around, like who else can provide that for me in my life? Like, cause sometimes you need to be the one that creates this space. And other times someone else is doing it and you can jump in and be in that with them and benefit from that. There's always opportunity. So a lot of times we like we we talk about how we can't do something cuz x y z. Well, let's think brainstorm other ways it can happen for us. You know? Like I thought about the other day I had this BS story around how I wasn't having enough fun in the day. I'm like, look at my schedule. Like it's filled and I have no time for me and I was like going down all that that stuff. Anyhow, um and then I was like, what? Like I can bring fun into what I'm doing now. Like I could have this meeting by doing going to this place. Oh, I need to do a brainstorm session of podcast episodes. When Ian and I go out for and have a beer, I can say, hey, help me brainstorm. And it'll be fun. Like you can bring fun to where you are. Please don't ever forget that you are in charge of how you want to feel. How do you want to feel? right? Always think about that. And what can you do to bring more of those feelings into your life right now with what you currently have versus waiting for the circumstances to change? Don't do that to yourself. Don't give your power away. Like I see that with my clients all the time. The ones that will say like, when I get this job, then I'll feel this way. It's like, well, why can't you feel that way now? Why can't you bring more of that joy into your life now with what you have? You can. And in fact, if you do that now, everything else will align because you're going to be a match for it. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. All right. I'll write the stuff that I talked about in the details, um, the different things you can reach out to, my email, um, Jill's stuff, and the Happen to Career stuff if you're interested in that and all at all. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm about to go on a hike 50 miles with my love, finish out this journey. I'll tell you more about it later. I hope you have an awesome week. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review. If you haven't, um, five stars, you got to ask for what you want. You know, like if you like this, it means a lot. It really helps people find the show. I hope you have an awesome day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.